Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to a Friday Algorithm Show. In today's video, let's spend a little bit more time to discuss retain cycles. Now, hopefully you guys are not sick and tired of this topic just yet, but in today's video, I'm going to go over another very good example that I found inside of the Swift documentation website on how to create retain cycles using a closure block uh, with this thing called an HTML element class. So right now, I'm gonna show you exactly what this example looks like inside of Playgrounds. So first, the thing to do is to actually create this HTML element class, which has two properties on it. The first of which is this name guy, which is a string. And let's also include this text string property. And we have to initialize these two properties with this constructor of name and text. And this is see self.name equals the incoming name parameter self.text equals the incoming text parameter. So pretty good stuff. Now what we need to do is to provide this deinitializer very similar to last week's retain cycle video. And inside of here, we'll print out uh, HTML element. Let's get the name out of the instance and just say is being deallocated. And so this method, will be called every time we attempt to set this HTML instance to nil. All right, so with this class, let's first create our element that represents a paragraph tag inside of a standard HTML document, which kind of looks like this a variable paragraph. Let it be of type HTML element optional equals HTML element. And inside of here, let's give it the P tag like that. And then the text will be uh, some sample paragraph body text. So hopefully some of you guys are familiar with how HTML works. Basically a paragraph tag is symbolized by this P tag right there. Okay, now that we have a paragraph, I want to set it to this nil object, basically giving me back the memory that uh, it is allocated with. Now in the console below, we have HTML element P is being deallocated which means that the deinitializer is being called correctly. So pretty good stuff. Now let's move on to further fleshing out this HTML element class. And basically I want to be able to call some kind of method on paragraph called as HTML like this. And I wanted to print out what exactly the HTML tag looks like inside of a standard HTML document, which means that this will print out this right here, P, and then we will get the sum sample paragraph body text, and then it is closed off by this ending p tag. So standard HTML syntax right here. Now the question is, how do I create this as HTML method call? So there's two ways of doing this, and the example in the documentation shows us a very very good way of using a closure to create this method call. So instead of using a function, we will create this variable on it called as HTML and let it be of type closure, which returns a string property like that or a string type. And instead of, let's see, inside of here, we'll set it equal to this closure block, which will return just the string of ABC for this example right now. And here we go. So what is wrong with this is that uh, paragraph right here needs to be called with this uh, question mark because it is optional type and let's see what is being printed out first. Let's get some space down here So as HTML is printing out ABC, which is represented by this uh, Return value on line 13. So that's kind of how you declare a variable that can be also used as a method call like that so in order to get this print statement of this P tag and the text inside of it we will use the name and the text property inside of this HTML class itself. So inside of here, you would do something like, let's see, this open bracket, and let's get the name out of it with the self.name like that. And then let's close the bracket, and then we will get the text out of it with self.text like so. And then we'll end it with this bracket style of the name property like that. So inside of these uh, closure blocks, you really need to call it with a self like that. 
Now there's going to be a compiler error right here. And basically you cannot call self inside of these uh, closure blocks unless you specify these variables as a lazy instance, allowing you to access self. So now let's see what happens here. Well, line 29 as HTML prints out the correct syntax for the paragraph tag, including the text inside of it like that. So pretty good stuff. And when we execute line 31, however, uh, the paragraph setting it equal to nil, we no longer see the deinitializer being called inside of the console down here. We're expecting to see uh, HTML element P being deallocated, but it's not happening. And the question we have is, why isn't this working? What is going on with this closure block to cause this retain cycle right here? So another question is, what is the retain cycle or what does it look like? Well, if I go to a Chrome browser right here, now let's just pull this in. Let me shrink this in so you guys can see. Uh, inside of this example right here, see the HTML, basically it has a reference to the closure block that we've defined here inside of this as HTML variable. And because uh, the HTML element class is holding on a reference of that, uh, what's happening is that the closure is also holding on to a reference of self. So they're both kind of pointing to each other, which means that you cannot deallocate it correctly. So that is the retain cycle. And the way to break this retain cycle is to use something called a capture list inside of your closure. So I'm going to do it right here and say bracket weak. See, I'm going to use the weak self version of the capture list. And this will give me the correct behavior once I correctly unwrap this self guy. So I can just use the question mark like that and like that. And this will give me something uh, closer to what I want. And you see, this is printing out a bunch of optionals, which is somewhat okay. But the main thing to focus your attention on is the deallocation is occurring now correctly inside of the nil setting on line 31. So a couple of ways to fix the optional printing out is to uh, just do this right here. So I'm going to say, if let this equals self, or how about we use a guard statement? Guard let this equal to self else return just the empty string. And inside of this entire thing, I'll just use the this instead. So this like that, and then also this like so. And if you look at the print statement of as HTML, you get exactly the text that you need. And this is how you would break that retain cycle that occurs inside of your closure block. So another way of breaking this is to use a unknown or unowned reference of self, <clears throat> but that's a little bit more complicated. And uh, yeah, you should definitely look at the documentation to figure out what it really means. All right, so that's going to be it for today's video. I'm gonna provide a link to the documentation down below in the description, as well as today's source code. I do highly recommend that you take a look at the documentation to see the examples and to understand exactly what is going on with their provided diagrams. And also, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, guys.